so the greek and roman so we are starting with uh, i mean to say that uh, the history of cryptography acha ji ek cheez main aapko bata dun let me check what it is there are certain terminologies that we are going to use na inside this particular slides and also in the coming coming up slides na वो टर्मिनोलॉजीज हैं लेट मी टेल यू के जी जैसे साइफर क्रिप्ट एनालिसिस एंड क्रिप्टोग्राफी राइट देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑल दीज ना अब देखें साइफर आपके पास वो चीज होती है दैट आई मीन लेट सपोज इफ यू आर गोइंग टू इनक्रिप्ट समथिंग एंड द इनक्रिप्टेड टेक्स्ट इज बीइंग कॉल्ड एज द साइफर टेक्स्ट राइट and crypt analysis is a tech is a mechanism in which you are going to generate the uh, decrypted text from the given text right from the encrypted text this is what you can call it as crypt analysis right or cryptography to aapko pata hi hai i mean to encrypt some information in order to hide the information that is what you can call it as a Uh, cryptography so these are the three things that we need to know uh, then uh, that you should know that in the in future we used to use these terms and there is a major difference between all these definitions right so uh, right now uh, we are going to study regarding the greek and roman use of cryptography right the greeks of classical times are said to have known of ciphers for example the skyatel transposition ciphers claim to have been used by the spartan military now see uh, i mean i have told you in the last class ke history ke andar hum different civilization ko padh rahe hain ke how cryptography has been evolved in today uh, i mean in an advanced cryptography right so over here if we can see that ke uh, if you can see in this particular diagram there is a horse right that is a wooden horse actually actually how this term has been evolved the trojan actually if you can see in this particular diagram there is a wooden horse and uh, in some olden civilization there is a war between two uh, i mean two countries in that particular war what is going to be happen uh, certain uh, i mean to say that people i mean army personnel are being hidden inside this particular i mean to say that uh, wooden um, horse and then that horse is being sent inside the castle i mean you people are well uh, very much aware about that thing ke pehle jo jangein ladi jati thi usme aapke paas there are castles and the people are inside the castles and the other uh, army is outside of the castle and then they used to fought against each other and when you are going to uh, i mean uh, invade over another army you have to i mean to say that uh, uh, you have to go inside that particular castle and then you can fought with that those particular people or uh, armies or like that right so in this particular situation what happened they are going to be hide inside this particular i mean to say that uh, uh, horse a uh, wooden horse and that wooden horse would be sent inside the castle right otherwise all the doors are closed but nobody knows that the people are uh, i mean sitting inside this particular horse when they when the army personnel would get inside through this particular horse now they came out and they have opened the door of that particular castle and then all the other army that is actually standing outside of the castle came inside and won that particular war against his enemies right so from that particular war or from that particular uh, from that particular time that idea or concept has been evolved like the trojan horse and that is called as a virus nowadays worm or virus trojan horse that is being present inside your computer and by sitting inside your computer he is going it is going to uh, i mean to say that spoof your information or read your information or something like that right we will be learning regarding the trojan horse in the future but right now i would like to give you that how this term is being related to the 
particular olden days terms, right? So how these things are being interrelated. So I'm just going to give you an idea that how it has been evolved, right? So that was regarding the Trojan horse. I mean to say that the Greeks of classical times are said to have moons of ciphers. For example, the Skytel transposition ciphers claims to have been used by the Spartan military, right? Then we have another Greek method that was developed by Polybius, now called the Polybius square. Each letter is represented by its coordinates in the grid, for example, bat. It becomes one, two, double one, double four. Achha, ek cheez jo badi important hai par wo ye hai ki you need to understand that right now we are reading or we are understanding the concept regarding the encryption. Okay, encryptions After some time, we will be learning, uh, I mean, how we are going to decipher these particular encrypted technique, encrypted data. This is what you can call it as crypt analysis. And that has also been done by different Muslim scientists or Muslim, uh, I mean, security engineers, right? So you must be knowing all these things. No? So right now, whatsoever the techniques we are understand are reading right now they are called as your uh, cryptography or encryption techniques like skytel what the uh, i mean encryption technique and this one polybius this is again you are going to encrypt your data right now see in this particular technique what is going to be happen you might have uh, what we have we might have the rows and columns I mean, uh, there are five rows, one, two, three, four, five, and there are five columns. Now, let's suppose if you want to encrypt your data, let's suppose bat, a bat is a word that you want to encrypt. What you need to do, you need to put the, uh, I mean, particular row and column number on the place of that particular alphabet. Now, let's suppose B. B is being represented by first row and so second column, right? So we have put one, two instead of alphabet b at the same time when we are talking about a a is being represented by first row and first column so we have placed one one on the place of a and the same way uh, t is being represented by uh, fourth row and fourth column so that cell and we are going to place double four on the place of uh, uh, on the place of t alphabet t so Actually, this value has been generated a cipher text we have generated instead of an original value that is called as bad. So this technique was known as Polybius square and that was an encryption technique that was used by the Greek ancient civilization. Right. So develop for telegraphy like pair of torches. I mean, the information that needs to be sent from source to the destination uh, for that reason this particular technique was developed then we have the romans romans conte romans was a was also an ancient civilization knew something of cryptography like the caesar cipher and its variation up yahan pe ek aur technique generate ki gayi that is called was that was called as caesar cipher this method is named after the name of the person who has developed that particular technique that, is a, that was Julius Caesar who used it to communicate with his generals. I mean, one thing I would like to tell you that in the ancient or olden civilizations, the cryptography or security techniques are being only being developed for the military organization. That is not for the normal people. I mean, normal means the normal public or the general public. I mean, like we sit on the internet and we say that we are using encryption or somebody, someone is going to develop its own technique or something like that. In the olden days, that security is not for the common people. That is only for the military organizations and the, uh, the, the I mean, the people or the, uh, I mean, countries when they fought between each other i mean if there is a war between two countries over there this these techniques were used no normal people or the normal people was not an, uh, i mean unable to use those particular techniques right so that's why that must be clear to all of you our classical cryptography was only been developed for the military organization i mean to say that right so julius caesar who uses to communicate with his journals right uh, then 
the Caesar cipher, how it has been used. The Caesar cipher is an example of what is called a shift cipher. To encode a message, letters are replaced with a letter that is a fixed number of letters beyond the current letter. Now, actually, what you are going to do in this particular cipher or I mean in this particular method, uh, you just have to replace your original word with the word I mean uh, I mean and uh, I mean with D let's suppose A B C let's suppose there are three words I mean A A is going to be replaced by D I mean the word after two or three words right uh, I mean A is the first word so we are going to replace it with D and the same way if you are going to say that B B is going to be replaced by the word uh, the letter E and the same way if you are going to say about C the C is going to be replaced by the letter F so this is how you are going to replace the values with the fixed number that are after some I mean to say that uh, in the same uh, I mean the row right so this is how you are going to apply Caesar cipher over your data so this is again an encryption technique make sure right now when this data is being received by the receivers and I mean the person who is the, uh, receiving that data he is going to decipher or decrypt the information in the reverse order I mean D would be replaced by E E would be replaced by B and F would be replaced by C this is how the information would be deciphered and can be understood by the normally normally for the people's right so this is the way the Caesar cipher is going to be implemented and make sure this was being developed by the person Julius Caesar right then later still Herbio scholars made use of simple mono alphabetic substitution ciphers such as at bash cipher beginning perhaps around 500 to 600 BC BC is the year right so uh, actually this is an again another cipher that is called as atrix cipher that is being developed by the herbu scholars that might be using a simple mono alphabetic substitution ciphers now what it is the atrix cipher is a very specific case of a substitution cipher where the letters of the alphabet are reversed in other words all e's are being replaced with z's and all B's are being replaced with Y's and so on. Now, here we have what is happening? Actually, we are going, like in Caesar cipher, we are going to move three words ahead or three words back. In this particular situation, you might not have such certain situation. You are going to say that the first word is being replaced by, or first letter is being replaced by the last letter. Like A is being replaced by Z. And if we are talking about B, B is being replaced by, I mean to say that Y. And if we are talking about C, the C is being replaced by the word letter X and so on. So this is how you are going to use your, I mean to say that, um, at which cipher, right? So you can see your example right now. You have a plain text. This is a secret message you might have. I mean, this is a text that you want to encrypt. Now, cipher text might be that you can see onto your screen. So this is how you are going to apply a mono alphabetic at bash cipher over a particular data. And in result, you would be getting a particular cipher text that you can see onto your screen. So this is another technique that was used for encryption. After that, now we shall be discussing now Crypt analysis. Now we have analysis to analysis of cryptology. Uh, I mean, uh, encryption to see how we, are, uh, we have gone through the techniques which are going to apply encryption. Now we need to learn regarding that how this data would be decrypted, right? Then we might have a person like Abu Yusuf Yaqub Ibn Ishaq Al Kindi. That was a Muslim scientist. I think if you people uh know about i mean during your fifth or sixth class or seventh class i do remember i don't know you people have read that particular lesson or not but in our when we were in fifth sixth or seventh class we used to learn 
regarding the Muslim scientist era. And in that particular lesson, we used to learn regarding Al-Kindi, Al-Khwarzmi, and all the Muslim scientists who have made uh, a lot of contribution in the field of science, right? So, he was one of them, Abu Yusuf Yaqub ibn Ishaq al-Kindi. Actually, the very simple name of this al-Kindi, right? People used to call him al-Kindi, but the full name of that particular scientist was Al uh, Abu Yusuf Yaqub ibn Ishaq al-Kindi. And uh, his uh, era was between 801 to 873 CE, right? So, what he has done, he has crypto, a cryptography from Muslim history that is called as medieval cryptography. Al-Kindi wrote a book on cryptology, the Risala fi Tehrajul Moma. The name in English would be manuscript for the deciphering of uh, deciphering cryptographic message that is uh, circa 850 CE. I mean that was the book that he has written regarding the cryptography, how you are going to decipher or uh, decipher the cryptographic information. This book apparently antedates Western European cryptography work by 300 years and predates writing on probability and statistics by Pascal and Fermat by nearly 800 years. Actually, this uh, after this book, for 300 years, nobody has done anything in that particular Field. I mean, for 300 years, nobody have done any type of research in uh, on that particular book. But after 300 years, uh, uh, I mean, nearly after 800 years, uh, I mean to say that uh, Pascal and Fermat have done the research on that particular area. Okay. So this is how your Alkindi is going to do all these things. I mean, have done this particular research. Now, this was the first page of his book. This is the first page of Al-Kindi's manuscript on deciphering cryptographic message containing the oldest known description of cryptanalysis by frequency analysis. Now, I mean, cryptanalysis is a procedure in which you are going to uh, decipher or decrypt the information. And frequency analysis is a technique that I would like to tell you in our next few slides, right? So this is something like uh, this. So in mathematics, Al-Kindi played an important role in introducing Arabic numerals to the Islamic and Christian world. He was a pioneer in cryptanalysis and cryptology and devised new methods for breaking ciphers, including the frequency analysis method. Using his mathematical and medical expertises, he developed a scale to allow doctors to quantify the potency of their medication. Now see, I have told you that he was a mathematician, like Al-Kindi have told you that he has designed or he has uh, uh, invented certain sort of Arabic numerals also of the Islamic and Christian world. And he was a pioneer in cryptanalysis and cryptology. So cryptanalysis and cryptology are the field of cryptography in which you are going to decipher or decrypt the information from an encrypted text, right? And devised a new method of breaking ciphers. I mean, he has designed a new method in which you are going to break the ciphers or something like that. So uh, using this mathematic and okay, fine. The frequency analysis, I would be telling you in the next slide. And using his mathematical and medical expertises, he developed the scale to allow doctors to quantify the potency of their medication. As we know that he was a mathematician, so at the same time he was working with cryptanalysis and cryptology, he has also designed certain mechanism or certain methods to quantify the potency of their medications also. So definitely one scientist has not been specific to one research. He might be designing some other things also. So he has also done certain research in the uh, designing, quantifying the potency of their medications and all that, right? So uh, this is what the frequency, uh, frequency analysis. Now, actually, what is frequency analysis? Frequency analysis is the cryptanalysis method. Na? Aapke paas ek, uh, deciphering ka mechanism hai, jiske you are going to find out 
the decrypted text from an encrypted information, right? Now, see in this particular diagram, there, I, I mean, I would like to tell you that every, uh, I mean to say that uh, every language has certain level of frequency. I mean to say that every alphabet in a particular text has a certain level of frequency in a particular text. Like in English, if you can see this particular graph, the frequency of each word is being predefined. If you have the set of text in English, then in that particular text, the mostly used alphabet or the frequency of each alphabet is almost fixed. Now, if we are talking about the highest number of frequency of an alphabet is E. E would be used at the highest frequency in that particular text. At the same time, at the second level, you might have T. At the third level, you might have A. And then you have O, I, and so on. So these are the frequency levels of each alphabet that might, that, that might be present inside any given uh, text, right? So, based on that, the frequency analysis can be performed. Now, what is going to be happen? Let's suppose if you are going to get any type of encrypted information, right? Uh, what I mean to say, the encrypted information if you can get. Now, you have to apply the frequency analysis onto that particular text, or onto that particular encrypted text. Then what you need to do, you need to replace with the highest frequency notation that is being used in that particular encrypted information you have to replace that particular notation or a word with the alphabet e and then you need to replace the second highest frequency notation in that particular encrypted text by using encryption uh, uh, by uh, by replacing the word or alphabet t and on the third place on the third most highly a frequency word that is being used inside that particular encrypted text, you have to replace it with A and so on. So by doing this, you are going to decrypt that particular information that is being uh, encrypted by using certain sort of mechanism. So this particular procedure is being called as your frequency analysis. Again, this is a crypt analysis technique. This is not an encryption technique, make sure. This is a technique in which you are going to find, I mean to say that certain sort of information from a given encrypted text. Then uh, we are moving towards the second, uh, I mean next slide. In this book entitled Risala Fi Stakhara Al Mama that is called as your manuscript for the deciphering cryptographic message. Al-Kindi described the first script analysis technique including some for polyalphabetic ciphers, cipher classification, Arabic phonetics and syntax and most importantly gave the first description over the frequency analysis. He also covered methods of encipherment, script analysis of certain encipherments and statistical analysis of letters and letters combination in Arabic. Now, in this book, he has developed certain sort of techniques for, I mean to say that crypt analysis, polyalphabetic ciphers, he has generated a classification and many other things he have done in order to, in this particular book. So this is just a description that what he has done in his book, that is your Risala Peace Takraj in Moma, right? So cryptography now in the Renaissance period. Now Renaissance was also a civilization. So in that particular period, what actually has been done? Essentially all ciphers remain vulnerable to the crypt analytic techniques of frequency analysis until the development of the polyalphabetic ciphers and many remain so thereafter. So the polyalphabetic ciphers was most clearly explained by Leon Battista Alberti around the year 1467 for which he was called the father of Western cryptology. Now actually what is going to be happen? Ek aapke paas thi mono alphabetic or dusre aapke paas thi poly alphabetic. Mono means single and poly means many. Poly means many alphabets, right? 
when we are talking about mono alphabetic that was used in the frequency analysis or uh, what we have used so far mono alphabetic humne use kiya tha yes in atbish cipher atbish cipher mein hamare paas jo alphabets use ho rahe the they are being called as your substitution cipher and they are being mono alphabetic ab mono alphabetic ka concept ye hai ke you are going to replace a particular word a particular word with only one alphabet right and it is very easy for any hacker or any person who wants to decipher the information he knows that only one word and its position and he can easily decipher that particular information right now let's suppose a is being replaced by z so he knows that the first letter is being replaced by z so it would be very easy for them to replace that particular thing like i would like to give you an example of static and dynamic ip addresses now static if you are going to configure your computer with an static ip address so i mean every intruder or any hacker that wants to hack your computer can easily break into your system because he knows the static ip of your computer that will remain same until your system or network administrator is going to change that ip address otherwise it will be remain same for the years right until that particular ip is going to be changed manually by the system administrator at the same time if we are talking about the dynamic ip address that is being assigned dynamically by the dhcp server right that is called as your dynamic host configuration protocol if that particular server dhcp service is being enabled inside your network now if your ip address is being assigned by the dhcp then it is going to be dynamically updated from time to time i mean maybe after 5 minutes or after 6 minutes the ip address from the given pool is being updated for the same computer might be for some time it is 192.168.10.5 and after 5 minutes it becomes 192.168.10.9 right i mean this mode might not be static so which one an easy way to i mean intrude into a system i mean if you have an static ip it would be very difficult it would be very easy for a person to break into the system but if a, you have a dynamic ip address or you have a dhcp service enabled then it is very difficult for an intruder or an invader to break into your system because he might not know exactly what the ip address is and if it is going to know the ip address for a 5 minute after 5 minutes it would automatically be changed so it would be very difficult for him to break into your break into the system so same thing applies over here so when you are going to say that uh, i mean to say that mono alphabetic it is a single alphabet and everybody knows that how the things are going to be managed but when we are talking about that poly alphabetic this means that your multiple alphabetic scenarios are being used cipher is being used and it would be very difficult for the invader to decipher that particular information right so this was regarding this so in europe cryptography became secretly more important as a consequence of political competitions and religious revolutions for instance in europe during and after the renaissance citizens of the various italian states the papal state and the roman catholic church included were responsible for rapid proliferation uh, of cryptographic techniques outside of europe after the end of muslim golden age at the hand of the mongols cryptography remained comparatively undeveloped now see after the renaissance period peoples or the scientists might not have done any type of specific research over a cryptography right people were not so much interested in that particular area so uh, i mean cryptography was not uh, a hot topic for research during that particular period right 